Much has been said about Nanak. What I was going to talk about was, were Nanak here, what would he have done? What would he have said? If you think about, this is the 550th anniversary. On January 27, 1945, the doors of the gate of hell at the Auschwitz camp where the Jews were exterminated by the Nazis that was thrown open by the Soviet forces. And that anniversary was celebrated just a few days ago. Just hold that thought. Just hold that thought because I think Nanink is relevant to what's happening today in the world. You've heard a lot about his philosophy. Our experiences make us. My experiences in life made me. I come from a family of freedom fighters, people hang, people spending time in British jails. Father was an activist. So I, my view of Nanak has been that of an activist Nanak. Nanak was a scholar, thinker, intellectual, debater, radical. He was an absolutely irreverent critic. He spared no one. But what we do to Nanak is we put him in this religious garb and we reduce him, many of us, not all, many of us, we reduce him to the scriptures. I can't imagine a Nanak sitting day in and day out reading even the most beautiful poetry, spiritual poetry, the same poetry day in and day out, reading it. My Nanak would ask me, you read it, you understood it, you know the world. What did you do to change the world? That's what Nanak would ask. What are you doing to change the world? And Nanak's verse, Pavan Guru Pani Pita Mata Tarta Mahatta. We've been talking about pollution and climate change and all of that. Tarth Mahat. Nanak didn't say Punjab was Mahat. He didn't say India was Mahat. He said Tarth Mahat. He would have never stood silently by and said Punjab is for the Punjabis, Assam is for the Assamese, Turkey is for Erdogan, and Hungary of Orban is just for Hungarian white people. Nanak would have never stood silent in face of all of that's happening in this world. In the world of Trump, Nanak would never have been silent. There are detention camps in China, huge detention camps. There are detention camps in Assam. We're building more in this country. There are detention camps in the United States of America where immigrant children are being interned. You think Nanak would have been silent in face of all of that? That's the Nanak who said, Rajeshi Makadam Kutte. He said that to Babur. In Babur Bani, he challenged Babur, the excesses of Babur's invasions. Nanak would have never been silent. Nanak would have spoken out. Nanak would ask me. My Nanak asks me. I'm sure your Nanak asks you. What are you doing about these issues? Nanak would have been on the front lines, not on the sidelines. Nanak wasn't the kind of chap, if I can use that affectionately. Nanak, he wasn't the kind of chap to sit idly by. He was a preacher. He was a debater. He was a challenger. He was irreverent. And coming back to the Jews, the Holocaust, and the anniversary that was celebrated just a few days ago of the opening of the gates of hell, liberation of that Auschwitz camp. I've been to the Auschwitz camp. How many of you have been to the Auschwitz camp? I have seen those camps where over a million Jews were exterminated. They were in detention camps. And if you have detention camps today, be they in China, be they in Assam, be they in Trump's United States of America, imprisoning children who are trying to run from poverty and injustice to freedom. He would have said, 
Raja Shima Kutam Kutte, Jai Jagayana Bete Sutte. How many of us? Nanak would ask me, Are you speaking out? What did you do yesterday? Did you just read? Did you just make a speech? Or did you go fight on the front lines and try and change the world? Because if we don't, this is what's going to happen to us. Let me just read to you the confession of a Lutheran priest in 1946. And I'm going to end in two seconds. Let me just read you the, the script. This is the poetic version of that confession. A Lutheran priest who was an early supporter of Hitler. Then he saw that Hitler was killing people, exterminating people. You may not actually know, some of you may know, some of you may not. The first people that he actually gathered around were Indians, my friend. They were the Romas, the Gypsies, gone from India, taken by the invaders as slaves, who then went to Germany. He actually got them. His hatred was focused on them because they were people of color. He killed over a million Roma. And then he actually exterminated over six million Jews. And this pastor, who was an early supporter, saw all that and made a confession in 1946. And this is the poetic version of that confession. And I want you to think about this. You, yourself, what are you doing? Think about this. He said, first, they came for the communists. And I didn't speak out because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the socialists. And I didn't speak out because I wasn't a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists. And I didn't speak out because I wasn't a trade unionist. And then I would have added a line about the Roma too. Then they came for the Roma. I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Roma. Then they came for the Jews. And I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak for me. My friends, we are each other's keepers throughout the world. Remember, Nanak talked about Tarth Mahat, not Punjab Mahat, Hindustan Mahat, Tarth, this planet Earth Mahat. Our destinies are intertwined with each other's. We must stand up for freedom, for liberty, for justice, for equality. Isn't that what Nanak is all about? Isn't that what we were talking about? So if we want to actually pay true homage to Nanak, then let your Nanak speak. I try and let my Nanak speak most of the time. Thank you very much.